Hey everyone, welcome back to the Cakeman Entertainment. In today's video, I will be reacting to the Acolyte, uh, the season one finale. Uh, yeah, it's been a bit of a horrible journey, if I'm being honest, through this series. Um, I have reacted actually to episode four and beyond. You can check those links out above. But yeah, as as I'm sure most of you know, that this season series has, in my opinion, not been very good. Yeah, there's been a lot of issues, not just with like yeah there's a ton of issues with canon and lore and all that but the more bigger overwhelming issue is that the story it's by itself doesn't make sense you don't really know what the character's motivations are and we're in the finale now i don't know what may or osha wants and they're both the main characters they're the protagonist and the antagonist um the last the flashback episodes have confused i feel the audience even more and from like what i've seen as well around the discussion of those two episodes they're the most hated episodes by like a long way uh, a lot of people thought those two episodes were like zeros basically and i i'm not it's not a zero but it was pretty bad both of them uh yeah still episode five i think was probably the best and that's because it had the least amount of dialogue because the dialogue has been horrendous i don't know who wrote the scripts oh i leslie headland wrote them but um yeah some of the dialogues and some, some of the acting is atrocious like it's 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 crazy when you see like soul acting or, or like um kamia Kim, or whatever his name is uh those two actors when they're acting you can see the emotions there i, mean, I know the story is not really following through on that but the emotion is there but the rest of the actors are so bland or their di delivery of lines is horrid like venestra um the uh the mother the not anasea the other mother and then um yeah there's a few others around even osha and may she's pretty bland of a character you can't even tell the difference between them which is an issue because you should be able to tell the difference between them they're not supposed to be like the same person but anyway um i'm gonna give this finale a shot look um i don't even know how they're gonna wrap up everything that they've set out to do because nothing's even really nothing's happened if i'm being honest nothing yeah nothing's really happened nothing's gone crazy nothing like that uh so i'm not sure what they're gonna wrap up or how they're gonna wrap that up i'm like gonna be 95 sure there's gonna be some cameos in here this is the last episode that's the way they're gonna try to appease the audience of course so like i'm just gonna chuck in a guess here the yoda's probably gonna be in this episode i i, I know that uh, I, I did see that Leslie Hedden said she won't be putting many um, legacy characters. She won't be putting legacy characters, but she already put Kia de Monde in there. Um, yeah, so I wouldn't be surprised if Yoda's in this, maybe towards the end, maybe the last shot or something. Um, yeah, I just hope they stay away from like Plagueis and and Tenebris, that he's master as well. Like, I hope they stay away from that because this show should be its own thing. It just shouldn't interrupt any of that. I don't even want to see Yoda. I... I, I I'm saying that as a huge Yoda fan, like I'd love to see Yoda, but I'm at that stage where I'm like, I don't want to see him. So, yeah, we'll see what we we'll see what we get. Hopefully, hopefully we get some good fight scenes. That that's something that is a positive for this show so far. But I'll get into it now. Before I get into this episode, I want to say that one thing I still don't understand is why is Osha not more pissed off at Camille? Like she killed his friends, but she seems to just be accepting him and have some sort of weird sexual desire towards him i don't know what it is something's something's weird's happening like he's acting all nice the sith guy but do we not forget what just happened last episode <laughs> what what the hell was that why is she on good terms with this guy man he literally killed her friends then shipped her off to this private island that he has yeah wink wink jeffrey epstein and then she has some sort of desire for him that's very messed up that's a real toxic relationship if you ask me and murdering our mother was justified bro your mother turned into some black demon okay of course he's gonna kill her if anything blame your mother for turning into that thing died because of the four of you are you serious you started the fire bro what is usha on about i mean may
And we still don't get how the hell she actually survived. She was just lucky to land on like a jumping castle or something down there. This May got beaten by Jackie, yet she seems to outmaneuver every single other Jedi master she's facing. Like easily. The hell was that pronunciation in that line, man? <laughs> that delivery was so bad. Oh god. Okay. Wanna ask another motivation here? If she just if she was trying to like hurt and kill Soul or if, sorry, if she was trying to escape this whole time, why did she even come with Soul in the first place? She literally took May's she took Osha's clothes, she left Osha on that planet, and then she went with Soul on purpose with the desire to kill him, and now she's just escaping without killing him? She even had the golden chance to. And then she also had the motivation of wanting to be caught by the Jedi like two episodes ago. Let's not forget that part as well. So confused by her character. She must be like, um, I don't know, mood swings or something. I don't know what it is. Something's off with her. Oh, maybe she is a psychopath. They might say that at the end. Why are they creating tension here? Soul, Soul's not going to shoot her. Or is it just a tractor beam? If it's a tractor beam, that makes sense. Wait, why did Basil just do that? What? You crash from outer space and there's not even an explosion or anything? I don't think that's how it works when you crash from, like, freaking asteroid belt onto the surface of the planet. So after all this, she still got caught after trying to hide all this information. So is Venestra like the head of everything or I'm confused. What is the order of leadership here? Is she the leader? Does the high council know about all this? If they know, why are they not pursuing this Camille any further? It's not like there's only like 10 Jedi. There's like thousands of Jedi at this period of time. Is that all, Senator? I mean, okay, this dialogue just then was at least a bit better. I don't mind that he's doubting, like, the Jedi. There's obviously going to be people who aren't going to accept the order of things at, at any time. Did I give you the impression that I was a fair person? Yes, you did. <laughs> How? How, but, but he that's fair and him killing like 10 Jedi last two episodes ago is also fair or did you ever consider what is going on here man did she just forget everything Plagueis Plagueis I wanted to see more of him though <laughs> actually I don't know if I wanted to see more of him <laughs> Oh, shit, it's the first time I've seen him in live action. It's hard to tell if he looked good or not, but yeah. Are we going to get an explanation as to why Basil pulled the wires on the ship and wanted him to crash? How can you gather as many knights as you can without raising alarm? <laughs> do, do, are the High Council, like, just stupid? Or they don't notice, like, Jedi being taken from within their own like building or i know there's like a lot of jedi but they should know if like even 10 15 jedi are gone or like dead especially like five or three episodes ago pretty sure yoda would have sensed if like 10 jedi just randomly died in a time of peace where jedi haven't died like in that sort of vein oh yeah because camille was shown that he can fly right i thought they showed yeah they did show that actually in episode five not sure how he can fly, but I heard that he can. Me? Osha? Who's this? I don't know. Oh, well, at least we get to see some sort of good lightsaber action. <laughs> Rather that than the dialogue. Sort of like Ahsoka with the mini lightsaber. Sh Shoto they call it, I think. Oh! 
That's sort of cool, not gonna lie, that he's that serious. And he, he takes the hilltop that turns into two. I didn't do this. You literally did do this. You freaking set the whole place on fire. Do you have dementia as well? Could he, how could he teach you to command? Also, why does it seem like Osha is May and May is Osha right now? Or is that just me? Seems like May is acting good now. And Osha is acting like a Sith. Or like Dark Side. Whoa, that was an unexpected yell. I mean... I don't like that scream she's doing. But the moves should be equal. It makes sense, right? Because they're technically the same person. Isn't that right? How do people keep disappearing? Just like from right in front of someone's face. Yes, keep the fighting up. No more dialogue. Just keep this going for the next 20 minutes, please. It's interesting. Move. Actually, why is he? Oh, wondering why Kamiya isn't using his helmet. Like you know, I used to hit the lightsaber to turn it off. How come we didn't do that against Soul here? Wait, this is Usher or May? I'm confused myself now. Good oh, okay, it's May. But why has May followed him for so long if she's clearly not afraid of him? Doesn't look like she is, but she acted like she was before. It seemed like she really had to do and well, kill like this Jedi. Puzzle. But now she's acting all good. I'm I'm so confused. I don't know how your mother reacted. No one knows, and I guess no one will know. <laughs> do you have any idea? Why does Camille even sound confused? Like he didn't know himself. Uh, oh my god, Osha's gonna turn bad now, isn't she? She just switched up so much. Like, before even she found this out, she just completely switched. Is she gonna kill Sol? Oh my god. No, don't do that, please! Oh my god, don't bleed the crystal, man. No, this is something we saw in Jedi Survivor. We saw Dagon do it. Don't do something that cool in a show like this, please. Soul just died, okay. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be crying now, because I'm not, but... <laughs> I'm Camille right now, I'm like, which twin is the one I should be trying to get? Because I don't know anymore. <laughs> Maybe I should try getting them both. Now May's like, wait, wasn't I supposed to be the bad one? <laughs> now I guess we're both bad ones. Or maybe May's going to become the good one. <laughs> mm, this show's fun. We need to leave. Bro, Osha ain't in her right mind if she... What the hell? How does he keep disappearing? They literally were just looking at him, both of them. Was she not just, like, fully overcome with hatred and emotion? At that point, like, you just, like, would hurt anyone that gets in your way. Even she would still hurt her own twin. But then she just seemed to calm her emotions in a matter of seconds. She should have just lost control there. She bled her saber, she clearly was losing control of her emotions. There's so many Jedi here, and you're telling me the High Council don't know. <laughs> oh, this is funny. Obviously, they're all here to get slaughtered by someone. Must be by, um, Kamiya. Why else would they bring so many unnamed Jedi? It's obviously gonna be a bloodbath. You too, certainly. We become Sith. What do you mean? We become Sith Lords now, bruh. Sith Lords. Darth Osha and Darth May. The Jedi will use me to find you. Wait. So 
we're just gonna end up right where we started. Osha's gonna be with the Jedi, doing her own thing, and May's gonna be with this guy. So literally nothing has happened. Remove any trace of you or me. Permanently. You can do that? <laughs> How powerful is this guy, man? <laughs> what? Wouldn't something like that take a long time as well? She just killed... Okay, okay. She just killed Sol. She clearly wants to go to the dark side. She Her lightsaber crystal bled. Why doesn't she just join him right now? Like, they should both just join him. That'd be the logical decision. No? He literally can make her wipe her memories that quickly. Why does she keep looking at her lips like she's gonna kiss her or some shit? <laughs> it's giving me real disturbing vibes, I'm not gonna lie. It's like kissing herself. Her facial, like, her eyes aren't going in the right place while she's talking to herself. Do you trust a murderer when they say, Oh, I don't know if I killed that person. When all the evidence points to them? So they blame it on Soul. <laughs> what a fucking shit cunt, Vanestra, actually. Yeah, but what, how's she gonna explain that? <laughs> so Vanestra's bloody bad. What the hell? She covered this whole thing up. You made a mistake. How could you do that to him, Vanestra? What the hell? What a bitch. Oh my god, this is all so fucking confusing, man. There's no questions answered. Now they're holding hands in a very creepy way. Are they gonna fucking have sex or something? I'm so freaking confused. What do they call that syndrome again? When you like are a victim of like a, I don't know, rapist or something and then you go back to them? I don't know, you sort of feel aligned to them or something? Forgot the name of that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Rip. Yeah, yeah, don't it? I thought so. <laughs> this kind of like that. <laughs> Not shocked at all. I knew they were gonna chuck Yoda in there for a bit. Okay, what a horrendously bad show. All right, um, that's the end of the acolyte. And well, what I don't know what the hell even that meeting will be at the end between Vanessa and Yoda. What Yoda's then? <laughs> isn't Yoda gonna be a bit like? sus with that whole story about how because okay okay let me remember as well in the beginning we had indara get killed by either oshom let's just say from yoda's circumstance someone just killed a jedi master then torben killed himself after talking to that same person who killed the jedi master then uh, Kelnaka got killed on his home planet, killed by a lightsaber clearly. Then Sol got choked to death, apparently killed himself. Then a bunch of Jedi also died on that planet, killed by Kamiya, but whatever. Yeah, they died as well. So in total there's what, like 10, 15 dead Jedi. Yoda's not suspicious about any of this, he's not worried at all that it could be like the work of something else, like a Sith for example. No, he's, he's, he's just going to believe Venestra when Venestra says, oh yeah, it was just the, all the work of one rogue Jedi uh, soul. But how does soul get so freaking powerful, man? I'm pretty sure he would have been touted if he was that freaking powerful. Um, yeah. If he could have like killed them all so easily, like I think Yoda would have like, had, like everyone at least would have had an inkling of how strong he is. And... Yeah, I, I I don't know how Yoda's even going to believe any of this story. I mean, he's not an idiot. He's one of the wisest, like, Jedi there's ever been. If He is the wisest Jedi there's ever been. So, if he believes this story, he's a freaking idiot. Um, if Venestra says something else, I don't know. If Venestra says the truth, that's even worse. That means Yoda hid everything from everyone. Um, what else is there? Yeah. 
even by the end of the show, I don't understand what Mei or Osha's motivations are. Now they've completely switched. Now Mei is good guy, Osha's bad guy. Like, what is going on? Why did they just all of a sudden switch again? They switch twice now. They keep just switching back and forth. So now we're literally um, where we started, except the opposite positions. That's all that's happened. Literally, Osha went from good to bad. Mei went from bad to good. And what? Nothing else. That's all that's happened in this show across eight episodes. Everyone else is basically dead. Um, yeah, the one character who's going well, Soul, just... If, okay, <laughs> Soul's that powerful as well. How come he, he just got, like, freaking force choked to death so easily? He was going one-on-one -on -one with Kamiya for so long. Kamiya's been shown to be very strong himself. She either he just gave up and let himself die or what like is that guilt okay maybe we can explain it like that if they it didn't seem like that but it seemed like he wanted to get out of that false joke but that's the only way i can explain it in that he was guilty and he let her kill him um yeah but if yoda's like the see the story isn't yoda gonna be like let me investigate this or let one of the jedi high council like someone higher up investigate this because this is a serious thing like 10, 15 Jedi dying in a time of peace. Like, in the Clone Wars, Jedi die every day. That's understandable. The Council doesn't care about that. Like, I care about the loss, of course, but they understand there's loss. It's war. This is a time of peace where nothing is really happening. So why is there 10, 15 Jedi dying in the space of whatever this show was, like a week? That's a huge amount. There probably hasn't been 15 Jedi dead in the last year. So the fact that that's happened... Of course, the High Council should be more suspicious and investigate a lot further than just listening to Benestra's words. Why would they just listen to a soul Jedi? She wasn't there when anything happened, so how can she even know? They should, like, be suspicious of what... Sorry. <laughs> she, they should be suspicious of what she said, too. Because how does she know? She wasn't there. She's just a, like, secondary source. She's not a primary source. Yeah, I don't know. The rest of the show, Camille was there. There was a nice little mini light to battle between Camille and Sol. That was probably the only positive. Uh, we got an. I didn't mind the dialogue scene by the senator and um, Benestra. Like her, him doubting the Jedi. I know what they're trying to see. They're trying to see that the politics 90 years later would lead to that. Again, it doesn't make sense in context because uh, this stuff happened a lot later and happened exponentially more during the prequels due to the war happening because the jedi were focused they, they had all their focus like towards the war and they were getting going away from the people they were losing themselves as as you've probably seen in a lot of media like they've said that the jedi lost themselves they lost their what their primary goal should have been and they became warriors instead of peacekeepers which is a big thing. But during this time, 90 years before, they are still peacekeepers. They aren't war mongers or whatever you'd like to call them warriors. They, they're peace make, peace um, keepers. So the fact that the senator's already like questioning it in that sort of way is strange because he was already questioning it before all of this happened too. He questioned it back in like episode four or something like that. So why is he questioning it? It's a time of peace. Nothing crazy is happening. Why are the Jedi being questioned? Have they done something wrong? Have they ignored the people? Yeah, it's it's strange. It's it's very strange. Yeah, all in all, um, Camille's there. He's still alive. Oh, oh yeah, I guess we got a little cameo of Plagueis there. I'm not sure even why they showed him. Was it necessary? We just saw his shadow and that was it. And we know that he's on that island with them. Does that mean he's going to kill them both? Like, uh, I don't know. Um, it was very unnecessary. Him and Yoda in there were both quite unnecessary. They both didn't say anything, and they're both just there for the sake of being there. Like, you can fully tell they just chucked it in there because they're like, oh, like, people are going to be like, oh, Plagueis, oh, Yoda. But no, I didn't have that reaction because cameos have always been a part of Star Wars, like, since the Disney era. Which, I'm fine with cameos, but I want them to have a purpose. Like, there needs to be a purpose for the cameos. Like, um, Luke's cameo at the end of Ma The Mandalorian Season 2, there was a purpose to that. He was taking Grogu away for training. Of course, they botched that by bringing him back two episodes later. But at the time, it had good purpose. There was definitely purpose for his cameo. 
there was purposefully watching him train uh, Grogu, like because that's obviously what's going to happen. He took him for training; he's going to train him. It's logical and and it makes sense. Plagueis being there, yeah, sure, it makes sense. Like he maybe maybe Camille is one of his like pupils; he's the one who taught him. But you don't need to include him. What's the point? It, it doesn't. It didn't add anything to the story, and it didn't have any shock factor for me because. I felt they were going to put that in. Honestly, it cheaped it. It cheapened the feel even more. Like, don't bring these legacy characters in because you clearly don't respect them. You clearly don't care about what previously has been laid out for you. You don't care about George Lucas's Star Wars. You've made that evidently clear, Leslie Hedlund. Um, so why are you using like legacy characters like Yoda, for example? Don't don't do that. Just do your own thing. You have mostly been doing your own thing, which is good. You tried to keep it at least within its own sort of thing like you could clearly you could easily just ignore this whole story but um which is what most people will do i'm, I'm, I'm sure of that uh, but um I, also i do have to say that whoever directed i'm not sure who directed this finale maybe it was leslie headland but they were sort of put into a hole it was not dissimilar to Rise of Skywalker after The Last Jedi. Like, they were sort of dug themselves into a hole and there was no way to get out of it. Like, you can't save it in the last act. If you have, like, two really shit acts or, in this case, like, seven very mediocre or shit episodes, you can't save the whole series in one finale episode. Yeah, even if we saw Plagueis, like, come in and kill, like, every Jedi or something, like, epic. Like, imagine, like, I don't know since they don't care about canon yet just like Plagueis goes out and just kills everyone kills Kamir kills all those Jedi kills Maeosha something like some epic lightsaber battles but it doesn't uh it doesn't matter because the rest of the series is crap and if that did happen the main characters what's the point of being attached to anyone Plagueis just showed up at the end then so you were supposed to f like it's simple character study right when you're writing a story you need the people who are watching it or listening to it or reading it to at least have some sort of emotional attachment to the protagonist and the antagonist. They obviously have to try and be more on the side of the protagonist, but you can make a story where it seems like you don't know which side you should be on. That doesn't mean you shouldn't be emotionally attached to either side. You should be attached to either both or one side. That's good storytelling. If you're listening to a movie, if you're, sorry, watching a movie and you're not emotionally attached to either character, why the hell are you even watching? Because nothing means anything. If any of them die or then threat, there's, there's some like tension there. There won't be the tension for you because you don't care if they die or not, which was the case for this series. Like there wasn't a single character I cared who died. Soul was maybe a little bit of feeling that I was like, mm, yeah, okay, he died, but even him, I didn't have that much feeling when he died. And no one else. Like, if Osha and May died, I wouldn't have cared. Because I'm not attached to their characters at all. They haven't given me reasons to be attached to either one of them. It's, yes, it's just simple writing. Like, I'm not sure what they're learning in the writing school of Hollywood. But you could have... Okay, you sort of written yourself into a hole by doing this time period. But they could have... Let's just take canon aside for a bit, okay? Whatever. They can break canon. They can change things around law. Let them do that, okay? If they really want to do that, let them do that. I, there's still a way I could have been happy, and I'm sure a lot of fans still could have been happy about it, okay? Say they broke the canon and law, but they focused on the story. They made it a character-driven narrative. They made us emotionally attached to the characters, like Osha and May, for example, because... Yeah, this this story was marketed as it was going to be a Sith-based show, but there was very little Sith stuff in it. If there was, we should have seen much more of Kamiya. We barely saw him until the last few episodes. It was just about Osha and Mei, and they're not really Sith or Jedi, clearly. They both said that, even. So, yeah, you, you, they, they needed to, like, attach us to the characters. You can't build a story around, like, nothing. We're not attached to anything here. There's even, even like, for example, the movie, um, The Batman. They even made us, like, attached to the place of Gotham, like, that area. 
and Star Wars is very much um, that as well. Like settings are characters, if that makes sense. Sense like Tatooine was a character in um, Star Wars. Like Tatooine's been a big character; it's probably been overused by now. But you, like you know what I mean? It it's so it has like the settings have a character about the Mustafa. Like everyone knows Hoth. Everyone knows like these sort of locations are characters within within themselves like the batman gotham was a character in this series i don't even i don't even remember brendor because they showed it to us 50 times and i don't know anything about it like no real attachment to that place except where the funny witch dance happened because the flashback episodes were the two worst episodes that happened so i do not like that planet i don't want to be there because those two episodes are horrible um yeah I, I don't know where Star Wars is going at the moment, and it's not a good place at all to be a Star Wars fan. Like, Disney have... I'll give them some credit in that they have pulled up some good shows, like Mandalorian Season 1 and 2, I enjoyed. Um, the Clone Wars Season 7, brilliant. Like, those last four episodes were some of the best Star Wars I've ever seen. The um, Rogue One, pretty good. Andor, I enjoyed Andor, actually. I did really like that show. I know some people thought it was a bit slow, but I really enjoyed that show. I thought the acting and... The CGI and that show looked amazing. Compared to this show, it was ass. But that show, like, it looked expensive. And the story was good. The acting was really good. Stellan Skarsgård, Andy Serkis, um, Diego Luna, all of them were proper good. But in this show, the budget was there, but the settings didn't look that good. There was a lot of dodgy CGI in there. The acting wasn't too good, like, good at all. Story was not there. Like, there was no story. What was the story at the end of the day? How can you sum up this story? Osha becomes good, maybe becomes bad. That's it. There was no tension or anything from any character loss. So, yeah, I don't even know why I'm still talking because it's just, it gets on my nerves because Star Wars was a big part of, like, it's always been a big part of my life. It still will be, but it's, it's diminishing as time goes on because of what Disney are doing. They're just crushing everything to the ground. Like, Obi-Wan, first of all, like, destroying that character and that whole show. Um, then you had Boba Fett, another absolutely wasted, like, potential character. Could have been an epic show, but no. It's absolute garbage. Mandalorian Season 3. How good was Mandalorian Season 1 and 2? And then look at Season 3. What the hell happened? Quality just became, like, so crap. And now we have this, the Acolyte, like, What's next? Skeleton Crew? I, I don't even know what that's about or who the characters are. I don't think I'm going to care about that show either. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's much hope left, to be honest, in Star Wars. I, I, I don't know what I'm looking forward to because there's no projects right now that I'm looking forward to. Mandalorian Grogu movie, possibly Ahsoka Season 2, maybe a little bit here and there. But other than that, it's, yeah, it's, it's very few and far between. So we'll just have to wait and see. If you made it this far in the video, which you probably didn't, but if you did, uh, let me know in the comments below what you thought of the Acolyte, the season finale, the series as a whole. And until next time, may the Force be with you. Always.